Welcome back. You're watching CHA Today. I'm your host, Jennifer Gallman. Our next guests recently opened for artists Nas and Damian Marley at the Fillmore in Charlotte. Here to tell us more about his music and life growing up off of West Boulevard in Charlotte is local recording artist De Niro Farrar. De Niro, welcome to the show. Welcome. Thanks for having me. First and foremost, I saw your show mm -hmm. opening up for Nas. You are very talented. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about why you wanted to be a musical artist. Uh, music is something I've always enjoyed. I've always enjoyed listening to rap music. Um, it's something I've always had a passion for doing. And uh, I mean, I didn't really have too many options. It was either I was going to work and the unemployment rate right now is like horrible. I was going to go back to school. Uh, I really, really didn't want to do that. And it was like this music. And it's like I have to do something that I enjoy doing. And this is what I enjoy doing. I have to do something that I can see myself doing for like a while right now and actually waking up every day and enjoying it. And music is like the only thing I have right now that I feel like I'd enjoy doing right now for like the next 10 years if I could. Now, you're a local artist in Charlotte. Where did you grow up? I grew up on West Boulevard, Little Rock Apartments. Now, how has your experience growing up there influenced your music? Um, just seeing a lot of things I've seen coming through, uh, a lot of situations I came through. Um, I, don't, I mean, you can hear a lot of the pain I have in my music, the story I tell. A lot of that has to do with growing up where I grew up, growing up there, uh, seen a lot, done a lot. So it had a big influence on my music, like the biggest impact, I think, on most of the music I make, most of the heartfelt music anyway I make. Now, when I was at the con concert, your mom was there, and, mm -hmm. and you mentioned her. How important has your mom been in your upbringing? She's been real important. Like, she's been supportive, nothing but supportive in the music right now that I do. Um, my father died when I was really young, so it's like uh, she's been there since I was really young. And um, really, she's all I had, so she has really, like, the biggest influence on everything. Like right now, she means everything to me. When I saw her at the concert, she had a grin from ear to ear. Right. And that just tells me how proud she is of right. you. Right. So you're doing a good job. Has it been hard, you know, pursuing a music career and other, other like high aspiring careers, like even a politician, mm -hmm. those are things that maybe you might have gotten a lot of people saying, oh, you can't do that or right. that's never going to happen. Right. Has it been hard? Um. At first, I mean, I always thought, like, could I make it or how am I going to make it? And um, I was I had so many other things going on besides music. It was like I wasn't really focused as I should have been. But then once I put those other things to the side and like really focused on music, like I know I'm going to make it now. I don't even worry about that anymore. Like I just go with the flow and right now things are going great better than i'd ever imagined like they would go for me well i've said it a couple of times but you are very talented thank you what would you tell others maybe in a similar situation mm -hmm. that you've been in or just someone else another young person in the community who might have a big dream what would you tell them um, to kind of inspire them to keep going um don't let anybody discourage you from what it is you want to do uh, give it 100%. Like, anything you put 100% behind, you'll make it. And, I mean, it's worth giving 100% because you know if you don't make it, at least you tried. So, I mean, giving it 100% is, like, everything. Now, um, and I'm sure you're familiar with growing up in Little Rock and mm -hmm. with Boulevard Homes right there. The Housing Authority is, has just received a grant to basically demolish and revitalize mm -hmm. that community as well as they're trying to work with Little Rock and community partners to add more services, better amenities to the West Boulevard. How important do you think that will be in helping change the lives of, of some of the people that now will grow up over there? Um. I feel like it's important, but at the same time, I feel like it actually has to be done because a lot of the same people will actually move back there and the situation will be the same. It'll just be better housing, but I mean, it'll still be the same situation if nothing else is being done but building better houses. I mean, it's like uh, the whole New Orleans and Katrina disaster, like they rebuilt most of it, but the same people move back. And so, and if you I mean, don't it's have the, the same result, like, you know. 
Right. So, I mean, unless they really going to do it, they're going to get the same result in the end. Well, this is the fifth um, revitalization grant that the Housing Authority's done. And mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you're familiar with First Ward uh, mm -hmm. in Uptown, but that actually used to be um, a public housing community. Yeah, Earl Village. Right. And yeah, it has, you know, you know, every Uptown area is going to have some issues, but it has completely turned around. I mean, the arena is over there, mm -hmm. the, and they have some, um, now they have a lot of retail coming in. So I think you're absolutely right, and that's something the Housing Authority is focusing on, making sure service providers are there. Every resident at Boulevard Homes through a local church um, called, their nonprofit is called City Dive, has someone working with them during the whole relocation process. Mm -hmm. Some people are just mentors. Like you said, you've had some struggles. They have someone that is going to check on them just to see how they're doing, which is th a lot different mm -hmm. than the other revitalization grants. Um, the Housing Authority really recognizes the importance of having um, certain services available, the education, even if it's a trade. Right. Like what how can I add value to the community? I mean, everyone wants to be of value, and right. these grants are very important to do that. And what's not been done in the past is the Charlotte Mecklenburg school system has actually agreed to um, have a piece of land out there to, to build a school. So mm -hmm. um, I encourage you to kind of watch and maybe in the future give us some feedback on what you think the Housing Authority and, and partners like the city and county have done, and it, is it working? And right. it won't be new buildings. Hopefully it will be changing people's lives and building people. People. Right. I hope so. I want to thank you so much for coming on today, and I, I just want to encourage you to keep us in the loop with your success um, because you are very talented, thank and you. I know you were very um, quiet about what your experiences were, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm not going to dig into that, but I can tell they've helped develop you into a strong individual, and we look forward to watching you succeed in the future, and thank I know you. you will. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Sure. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. To learn more about artist Danira Farrar, log on to the website, blackflagrecords.com. If you have any questions about today's show or suggestions for future shows, please email us at chatoday at cha-nc.org. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.